But thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your time. We're going to take one hour. We'll go really fast. I hope that you've got a pen and paper in front of you. Can you raise your hand and show me if you're here for the first time? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, this is an opportunity meeting. This is for those of you that are here for the first time. Uh, the others may have heard some of this before, so they'll have to listen again. But for those of you that are here for the first time, we're going to explain uh, this business. We're going to talk about the five key points tonight of New Skin and what that means for you, what it can mean for your future. So if I can have your help tonight, first of all, I want your cooperation. I've come a long way to talk to you for this hour, and if these things keep going off, we're going to be interrupted. So don't be so rude as to let your phone go off and interrupt everybody else. Okay, so please kill them completely. Any better? Is that better? Okay, good. All right, so if you can just kill your phone, then we won't interrupt everybody else around you, and we can kind of keep the thing going and keep our thought process. If you're tempted to put it on vibrate, then pull the battery out. All right, just kill it. <laughs> Anything that interrupts your thought tonight could cost you, it could cost you that, that concept. That one thing that maybe you should have heard, you should have understood tonight. So I don't want that to happen as we go through the presentation. My story starts off uh, about 21 years ago. June of 1989, I came home from a particularly long day at my real estate office. I had a small brokerage in Salt Lake City, Utah. I had a number of agents working for us at that time. And I remember kicking my shoes off at the door and walking into the kitchen, and I stood there on the tile floor and the telephone rang, and on the other end of the line was my brother-in-law, and his name is Craig, Craig Tillotson. And uh, he launched into this entire description of this company called New Skin. And he started telling me about how fast New Skin was growing, and now was the time if I was ever gonna join, if this was it, and that I needed to be involved in the company, and this was like a 20-minute one-way conversation. And at the end of 20 minutes, I thought, well, my feet are really starting to hurt on this tile floor. I think I'm going to end the conversation. So I just simply said in the phone, I said, Craig, thank you for the phone call. Thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate that. But I'm just not going to do it like that. And the phone goes quiet. It seemed like a minute, probably only 10 seconds. And he came back just strong. He didn't back down at all. And he said, what is your problem? Like that. Now sometimes only family can speak to family like that. And he was talking to me like that. And I thought to myself, how kind. He wants to know my problem. I think I'll tell him. And I said, Greg, here's my problem. I'm a really competitive person. I said, you've already been doing New Skin for three or four years. You're already making 30 or 40,000 a month. You're already so far ahead of me. That even if I started today, I'd probably never catch up to you. you know, that's kind of a common misperception people have in our industry. They think that somehow it's like a pyramid, and all we're going to do is push the top person up even more. And that's how I thought. And I thought in my mind, I said, I'm not going to just pitch in here and just push in even further up the ladder, you know? So I said, You're already so far ahead of me. Even if I started today, I'd probably never catch up to you, and that would drive me crazy the rest of my life. And the phone goes quiet again, and he comes back strong again, and he said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. He said, why should you begrudge me the money I'm already making? I didn't see you here the last three or four years. You chose real estate. I chose new skin. Maybe you chose wrong. And he said, furthermore, I'm going to move forward in this company, Nathan. I'm going to move forward with or without you. And I'm going to make $100,000 a month whether you do this or not. I was just like Brian and Salt in the womb. The thought went through my mind. If my brother-in-law actually makes $100,000 a month, I'm probably going to have to jump off a bridge. Something like that. I wouldn't be able to put up with that at all. And then he said, Nathan, let me tell you your real problem. He said, the real problem you have is you're in the wrong vehicle. He said, uh, and he wasn't talking about the car I was driving. He said, it's like you're pedaling a 10-speed bicycle. And he said, me, I'm driving a Ferrari. And he said, it doesn't matter how fast you pedal that 10-speed, 
you're never going to catch me in my Ferrari. And that was the first time in my life when I stopped. I don't know why I even thought about it. I stopped and I thought, yeah, what kind of vehicle am I driving? Maybe there is a different way. Maybe there is a better vehicle. Because the vehicle I had always been in my whole life was the sales vehicle, whether it was selling real estate or selling computers or whatever I was selling at the time. And I'd been through all the sales training and the Franklin Covey courses and the daytimer things and the prioritization of my day and planning before I went to bed at night so I could hit the ground running in the morning and how I had to pre-qualify my prospects and make sure I was working with people that could perform and not waste time and all these things. You know, it was always me, me, me. You've got to be more efficient. You've got to be better. It's all you, you, you. And what my brother-in-law was saying to me is that it, it can't be all you. There's not enough of you to go around every day. And I've got a better way. I've got a different financial vehicle that I'm driving in my life that contains different mechanics than yours contains. It contains elements that allow me to leverage myself to do more than I could just do on my very own. And so that was a new thought for me. I'd never thought about that before. I'd always had my income just depend on me and me showing up or me doing the job or me doing the work or you know, me selling the houses or whatever it was. It's always me. And I suspect it's that way for most people here tonight. And so this was a really big change for me to think about that. And tonight, I want to show you a different financial vehicle, something that can be completely different than maybe anything you've ever thought about before in the past. And this can be something that can be really significant for you. Now, I'm going to tell you right at the outset, this is the greatest business you will ever see in your life. Now that's a really big statement. I'm going to put some foundation underneath that statement. But it is absolutely true. And I want you to remember this one thing. Why? Why is this the greatest business you'll ever see? Anybody in this room, I don't care what you're doing right now. I don't care what kind of business you have right now or how successful you are or aren't or whatever. Here's why it's the greatest business you'll ever see. Because you can get huge upside leverage. Huge upside leverage with literally no downside. No bankers, no loans, no personal guarantees, no debt, no risk. That is unique in all the world. Because anybody here who runs any kind of a business of any kind, you know that if you're going to get that upside leverage, that's going to have a lot of risk attached to it. Probably can measure it with the amount of leverage you're trying to achieve. And that leverage, if it goes bad, is really, really negative. It can cut down really hard. That doesn't happen, that doesn't happen here. All right? You don't make it in this business. You don't lose your house. You don't lose your retirement plan. You don't lose all the money that maybe you borrowed from everybody. Okay? You survive it. You walk away and you just you know, go get a job or keep doing your job. Do whatever you do. But you're not dead financially, right? So it's a different thing. And that's why it's the greatest business you'll ever see. My brother-in-law uh, convinced me to spend a couple of weeks really digging into the company. Because the story most of you have never heard is that I was in two other networking companies before Newsman. I was in my first company when I was 22 years old through 23 and I made a $40,000 bonus check in a single month in that company. And that was just about as much money as my father made with his master's degree in a year. And I made it in a month and I thought, wow, there was really something to this. And then eight months later they filed bankruptcy. And so it was gone. I thought, well, that was pretty dumb. That wasn't very fun, actually. You know, it was okay to take the ride up, but the ride down was no fun. And so I joined another company called California Trim. They had these little diet drinks in these aseptically packaged brick packs. You know, you punch the straw on the top and you drink them. And the only problem with that deal was they had so much sugar in them, people drink them like crazy. They were gaining five pounds a week instead of <laughs> losing five pounds a week. So they were going the wrong direction. And the company had all kinds of problems, and they couldn't produce enough product. And they Finally, the management decided they didn't want to pay us those kind of bonus checks. They just decided, we're not going to pay you. Well, that company went bankrupt within a few months after that. And I just swore it off. I thought, what a stupid industry. It's got all this promise, but nobody can seem to manage it. And I swore it off. You can imagine the skepticism I had when my brother-in-law called me on the phone. Was I going to go do this again? So I had to spend a couple of weeks to figure it out. At the end of those two weeks, I was convinced. I thought, I think these people can actually do it. And so I decided to jump in. And I 
spoke to my wife about it. We, you know, we're doing this together, and, and I needed her support. We have three little kids at the time, three kids under five at the time. You know, need to make five thousand a month. I'm going to quit real estate. I'm going cold turkey into this thing. I'm deciding that if I'm really going to do it, I'm really going to do it. I'm not going to mess around. If this is the one, I'm going to make it happen. And so at the time, we had a home with an office on the end of the house with its own entrance and a bathroom in there. And I told my wife, I said, honey, look, I think we should go for it. She said, let's do it. I'll support you. And I said, okay, here's, here's what I need from you. Okay, no honey dues. Don't tell me to cut the lawn, you know, wash the car, or, you know, get a haircut. I'm not going to have time. I said, I'm going to be in that room right there, either on the phone talking to people, or I'll be out meeting with people. So keep the kids off the door. I can't have screaming in the background. i got to sound professional in here. And I said, if you'd just be so kind as to shove food under the door about three times a day <laughs> at regular intervals, I'll survive, you know? And I said, that'll, that's how it'll be, and I'll see you in two years. <laughs> of course, I was kidding. But I wasn't really kidding. You know, she had me on Sundays. But other than that, it was really her deal to keep the home front going because we went after it. This is how I was going to feed my family. This wasn't a hobby. This was, this was my income. And so I had to get very serious. I had $30,000 saved in the bank when I decided to do new skin. I had to have $5,000 a month to pay all the bills. So I had six months of money. I had to make more than $5,000 a month within six months or I was going to go bankrupt. I was toast. And so that's where we began the business. And I remember jumping into the office there, and it was just as fast as we could start to call people. As many people a day as we could get on the phone and try to explain what we were doing. We'd go out to do meetings. We'd do four, five, six, seven meetings a day. Two people, seven people, three people, five people, sometimes no people. And we just practice on each other. Give the presentation to each other. Because we just thought, if we can tell the story of Newscan enough times, then we'll get good at it. And we tell it enough times, it's kind of like a brick in the wall. Every time we tell it, we put a brick in it. We tell it again, another brick, and we tell it in a brick, and 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 if we tell it enough times, then we can build a castle. That's how simple my faith was about what I was trying to accomplish. And so we just worked like crazy, 16 hours a day almost every day. We had so much fun. It was so fun just launching this new thing and being in the trenches. And I remember calling people at midnight. And you'd hear him just fumble for the phone. Like that, you know. Hello? And we'd say, this is your wake-up call! Get up! How can you sleep? We're just screwing around with people, having so much fun. That's what we did. We had fun. And then, I remember the first check showed up from this game. I was so excited to tear that check open. We'd been working so hard. I ripped that check open and I was so depressed. It was $547. And I thought, are you kidding? You know how hard we just work? And I had my other brother-in-law as my partner in my real estate business, so we did new skin together. So we had to split it. We got like $250 each. Didn't even pay the phone bill. We're already almost through the next month anyway, so we just plow ahead. The next check shows up, it's $1,100. When I looked at that one, I thought, I'm going BK. Definitely going bankrupt. That's for sure. It ain't going to work. i got to get this check going faster than 